Uh, so I'd like to call to order this meeting of the um, Village of Woodstock annual village meeting at 7.30 on the 21st, 21st, March 21st, 2023. Um, I would like to turn it over to Greg. Greg Cam, correct. Greg, who's going to start us out? Absolutely. So um, with tradition, I just have to read the, the warning and then we go through the articles and so forth and we'll stop and make adjustments and hear from people as we move along. But I am Greg Camp, been the moderator up until now, and will have to reelect me in just a few moments, if you wish to do so. Um, so the warning reads, the citizens of the village of Woodstock who are legal voters in the village of Woodstock, Vermont, County of Windsor, are hereby warned to meet at the town hall on the 21st day of March, 2023 at 7 a.m. continuing until 7 p.m. for the purpose of transaction during the time that time voting by Australian ballot which has already happened and those have closed and we'll have some announcements about that in a bit. The citizens of the village of Woodstock who are legal voters of the village of Woodstock County of Windsor state of Vermont are hereby warned to meet in the Woodstock town hall in said village on the 21st day of March 2023, 7.30 p.m., started very promptly, very nice, to act upon the following articles. Um, we will briefly skip over Article 1 just so that we can move and I'll turn things over to the board to accept uh, nominations for the moderator. Okay, are there any nominations for the moderator? Nominate. Okay. okay, all in favor of Greg Camp as moderator, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations, Greg. <laughs> You're stuck with us. Stuck with you. That's good. Um, so before we get into the articles, um, we're going to maybe do some introductions, and then I'll go over how the meeting should run, Great. and we'll get back to Article 1. Okay. So does the board want to introduce themselves yes, to it. people that may not know them? Um, yeah, so I'd love for the board to introduce themselves. Jeffrey Bond. Charlie Watkins. <laughs> uh, well, now that you mention it, uh, I'd like to comment on. So I have to say. Please don't get him started. Nice to see you here. Uh, my name is Seton McElroy, uh, and I've been in Woodstock for four years. I am Brenda Blakeman, and I have been in Woodstock for 38 years. Uh, I'm Gabe Galeon, and I've been here in Woodstock for just about five years now. Eric Duffy, new municipal manager, and I've been here for seven weeks. <laughs> I got back in 51 years. 51 years. Yeah. 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 Nice. Um, so next, what I want to do is Gabe uh, just quickly is going to give us, uh, for those of you who had not met Eric, who didn't know about sort of our process, um, I asked Gabe to put together, uh, give you a little overview of how we found Eric and how we decided uh, on him as our municipal manager. And it wasn't on that. I didn't find you on a nap now. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, we essentially, as uh, as a as village trustees, uh, wanted to find the best possible candidate. Um, so uh, we we had the unique challenge of having to uh, find someone to at least take over and handle the day to day uh, responsibilities uh, while we looked for a new uh, municipal manager in earnest. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll talk to you a little bit about the process. So we installed uh, an interim town manager, and that was Tom General, who uh, served us very well for the time that he was here. Uh, he was contracted to uh, maintain the day-to-day -day here in town hall during that time. And we really thank Tom for his service uh, for the time that he was here. Uh, in terms of conducting the, uh, the recruitment, I'll just... Uh, give you some brief bullets here. Uh, so we formed a, a committee consisting of two select board members. Uh, so that was Susan Ford and Ray Bourgeois. And then we also had two trustees, that's Seton McElroy and myself, and two residents of the village, uh, that's Laura Powell and Tom Ayers. Uh, and they all helped with the recruiting process. Uh, engaged, we engaged a consultant, a uh, well-respected and knowledgeable town manager, uh, here in Vermont uh, to help to assist with the recruitment process. Uh, his name was Dominic Cloud. 
the consultant helped us with uh, development of a municipal manager profile. Uh, he cre helped us create a job description, uh, helped us determine the compensation structure and assisted with ne the negotiating process. Uh, determining, co I'm sorry, the job posting in the local newspapers and the town administrator, town administrator portals, as well as using word of mouth in local governments. Uh, he helped us target the appropriate candidates, uh, conduct applicant and candidate screening. Uh, we looked at approximately uh, 25 resumes. We performed Zoom interviews and in-person interviews as well, meet, as well as meet and greets with our police chief and our fire chief, as well as our planning and zoning manager. Uh, we performed background uh, searches. We, uh, we looked at referrals and we researched media sources to obtain information on the various candidates. So that was it, in a nutshell, the conducting, I'm sorry, conducting the recruitment process. There were three key traits that we were really looking for in the candidate. The first one was financial acumen, uh, given some of the recent issues we had, uh, we had encountered. Uh, ability and willingness to engage with the community residents and business owners. So really a person that would maintain a, pro, a high profile, be visible while exhibiting excellent communication skills with the public and the town village employees. And most importantly, having gone through uh, some recent changes with, with town managers here, uh, we wanted to have someone who would provide stability. And I think we found our person, right? Nope. Uh, and arrived on a, on a decision to hire Eric Duffy from Stoneham, Mass uh, as our new municipal manager. And he's now been with us for approximately two months, right, Eric? And uh, we're happy to have him. So uh, I wanna once again, welcome Eric Duffy as our municipal town manager. Uh, but basically that's the process that we all undertook as the committee to bring us a new municipal manager. Thanks, Gabe and Greg. Back over to you. There we go. Um, just on one other note, the dedication to the uh, this year's report, um, village report, to Robbie Blish, our police chief. Um, just wanted to say what a fantastic person he has been serving this town. And if I remember right, although I was involved with the search and met you through that, our first official meeting was during Irene, perhaps? I saw you out directing traffic amongst the floods of waters, and uh, you've been a great community member um, of the town as well as a wonderful police chief. So on a personal note, I, I just wanted to thank you on behalf of everyone for everything you've done for this town. Thank so. you. All the great people I've met here, I will definitely miss you all. Uh, so, and again, it's been uh, a terrific ride. I have a great staff, and I, I really appreciate everything that they do. So, uh, I'll be around just a lot. So, if you can come say hi or speak, say hi. I appreciate the sentiment. And everybody, you know, wishes me well. So, it's really nice. Thanks, Robbie. Okay, back to <clears throat> Article One. What's that? It's at the end. Yes. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, well, before I get to Article One, if when we uh, when we go through the articles, <clears throat> in order to put them on the floor for discussion, we'll need a motion. Just as when you elected me, we'll need a second. When you do those, if you could say your name fairly loudly and clearly, so that our Scribe over here, our clerk, Don Wheeler, can uh, get that written down for the minutes. It's even though you might know everyone in the room, it's much easier if your name comes out loud. <clears throat> and then we'll be able to move through this. And after each motion and second, there'll be time for questions, comments until we vote on the article. Okay. All right. Article one, to see if the village will vote to eliminate the elected auditor's positions in accordance with 17 VSA, 2651B and enter into a contract with a public accountant or auditor's firm licensed in the state to perform the annual financial audit of all funds of the village 
except the funds audited pursuant to 16 BSA 323. Do I hear a motion to bring that to the floor? Do I have a second? Jill Davis has seconded. Thank you for saying your names, Jill Davis. There we go. Okay. Uh, Questions or discussion? Oh, I, and then I should also warn that we will have to, this is required by state statute that we do a paper ballot on this one article. So we will have to do that in a moment, but discussion first. And yeah, I'll, sp I'll speak to article one. Uh, so for many years now, we've had um, sometimes two, this past year, one a village auditor. And their, their function has kind of diminished to um, reviewing the audit that we pay a professional auditor to do. Um, and so it, it, it kind of became apparent to us uh, after a while that uh, it's really a, a position that's outdated and serves no real uh, benefit to uh, the trustees or the village. Uh, the professional auditor does quite a bit. And we spend significant money on that audit. Um, on the new budget, it's about fifteen thousand dollars. Last year, we spent uh, thirteen thousand. Um, and uh, these professional auditors have to abide by government, uh, federal, and state standards, and they prov provide unbiased audits um, that uh, are really are, are useful to us. And they have found important issues that they bring up and we then correct the years. Uh, so we believe that it's beneficial to drop the position of village auditors, who this year, by the way, it was Stephen Stuntz, who's, who's not here. Last year it was Corwin Sharp, who did it for more than one year. Um, and previous to that, there were two auditors and then some years one. Uh, it, it's just a position that's seen its and, and it's not serving any function. So we have it there for everyone to vote on, but I think it's advantageous for us to, con to continue with the professional audits that we have done. That's very, very much, very important. Um, and that's what this is, what you will be voting on. And uh, questions? Questions? Or, go ahead. Thank you for waiting. The auditors found that city, um, and it wasn't, well, it's not, wasn't quite that figure, but the, uh, they found it uh, be, because it was an error that was made in house. We were not aware of it, but the error was made. They found it. And it has now been, it no longer exists as a liability. But that's one thing that that professional audit pointed out that we were previously unaware of. Other questions or comments on Article 1? Okay. We can bring Article 1 to a vote. We, I can help you hand out paper ballots. Here, uh, everyone has to go through a checklist. Dan has a couple of uh, JDs here that uh, you will file back and give them your name and get checked off the list. So we have it out and stop it. So that will help. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you come up to the yeah. table? Yeah. There you go. That was my box. And I think that the value is and Rick, there's a chair right there. Place a chair. Yeah, I call it. Yeah, yeah, sure. Probably. Aren't they in the book? 
Yeah, I was going to say they're probably right in there if you're looking for them. There you go. Bad. Yeah. Well, so let me see. Good enough. Oh. <laughs> So, you know, put this over here. No, we're we're supposed to uh, we're supposed to put those on the left hand side at our P for paper. Okay, I'm set. And and he's passing them out. Okay. Yeah, you get the balance there. Mark, you were there before. I was. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I am uh, from oh, he is oh, the best guy. Oh, yeah. Okay, Howell, O W E L. So, your husband? Yeah. With the green. Hey, Laura. Bill. Hey, hey sweetie. Hey. 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 Bill, Eric, my yes. Laura. Yes. <laughs> She's feeling better. <laughs> You'd be with Rick. Uh, Wait, what letter are we using? Sorry. E. 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 For paper. Yes. Yeah. E for paper. I need to. So I'm so in Fletcher Hopper. There you go. Caffrey, C A F F. Right here. S C. S C. Okay. Oh. Okay. Thank you. There you go. Oh, I know you. I don't, you <laughs> I don't see you very often. I don't see you very often. Right? Yeah. Hmm. Um. It's going here. Okay. Oh, we thought. All right. Good. Good. Thanks. Every time I see Rory play, I think of you. Uncle, Uncle Rory, right? Yeah, I mean, we should do the same thing. Yeah. You're over here. Yeah. She's got a friend of Blakeman. What? Oh, Blakeman. Oh. Oh, no. 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 You got your bell. I'm going to get one. Okay. That big, huge thing. Thanks, Don. Mr. Wheeler, thank you. Sure. I don't think I got you, Alex. Thank you so much. I think that's sexist, uh, Seton. Oh. Be prom king. Prom person. She. Mm. <laughs> so politically correct. Oh, right there. There we go. Do you want me to put yours in? Put your mouth. Is that legal? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't want to know. I think I've got everybody. Um, yeah, I guess. Yeah, everybody's recording everything these oh, days. You've got to <laughs> Those are one of the trustees. Huh? Yeah, I know, right? Oh, yes. We'll talk I know. about that. I know. That's the way I. <laughs> so if anybody to ask ask me for one set. Did, did you vote? We've got for a couple it? more. Yeah, I, mean, I can't. I can't. Yeah, I think you should. Well, I do not You're also a citizen. I know. Who wears two hats? Did you get Mr. DeLeon? Yeah. You aren't on. I mean, I think your name is Cam. Yeah. Wow. Oh, He's not on our Well, we didn't write it in the box. 
Am I a good time? I am. Okay. How are you? Help? I'm good. Um, uh, and then Jeffrey, I don't know if Felicia caught my name on there. So. Oh, did you get a tape? Yes, I did. Yes, right behind. <laughs> so has everybody got a ballot? Uh, I guess we'll find out. About you. Yeah, but I. Did you leave me? Uh, no. did, did you mark it off? No, he can't. I'm it's Jane so <laughs> Oh, he's got that. He's got that. Yeah. And then what do we do? You vote. You mark it for it, for it, for it, um, or against it. You can. Reckon. That's the next thing. Yeah. I'm going to be strong or by the time we get down. You got it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We are. Okay. Building up a little bit. All right. They'll go count those. Yeah. Okay. So Actually, we lose our scribe. Awesome. I mean, like, is there your vacation? No. Oh, oh where did Don go? I don't know. Oh, he's, he's counting, counting folks, so I don't know. I don't think he needs to come to hook, does he? I love it. I don't know. You sell Bill? Uh, I love it. Yeah, Charlie, is that time to go, Connie? Yeah, I just said. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So we'll um, we'll continue and announce the uh, the results from that vote as soon as possible. Um, so on Article Two, we already um, elected myself, Greg Camp, as moderator. Uh, I would now entertain a motion for anyone who would like to serve as clerk. I move Don Wheeler. Jeff Kahn for Don Wheeler. A second comes. Ward, good enough. Say your name, please. But I got it. Yep. Thank you, Ward. Um, Discussion or other nom other nominations? Discussion. Okay. I'll I'll take a vote then. All those in favor of electing Don Wheeler our clerk for the next year, say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you. Don's done it for a couple of years. And he's wonderful. We appreciate everything that he does for us. Um, the next two items are trustees, and those were done by Australian ballot during the day. The uh, trustee. Um, for the three-year term, uh, winning the election today is Seton McElroy. Congratulations. Trustee for the two-year term, winner of the vote um, today, William Corson. Okay. So onward, we move for another position, treasurer. What? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, he's not able to get in yet? Oh, no. Ah, oh, thank you for that. I don't pay attention to the Zoom as much. There he is. We all good? Bill, you've been elected. <laughs> Congratulations, Bill. <laughs> okay. Um, I will accept nominations for the position for one year for treasurer. 
Do I hear any nominations? Do I hear any volunteers? <laughs> Chris Miller nominates Charlie Degner. Is there a second? Carol? Thank you, Carol. There's a second. Any other nominations? Hearing none, I will uh, ask for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Nay. Okay, none. The motion carries. Sorry, I, don't, I guess that was a vote coming over Zoom. Um, Trustee of Public Funds of one year term. I nominate Jill Davies. Jeff Kahn nominating Jill Davies, seconded by Chris Miller. Any other nominations? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Congratulations. The motion carries. On the auditors, we will wait um, until we have the results of the paper ballot to see if we do such, such election, I believe. Um, so we'll move to Article 3 to fix the annual compensation for the elected village officers. I will run these all through as one article, and then if you have specific amendments or issues with any of them, you can bring that up. After we've moved it, moderator, $50 per meeting, treasurer, $1,500 per year, clerk, $400 per year, trustees, $750 per year. Do I have a motion on Article 3 as presented? Carol, Carol anybody second? second? Thank you for saying your names. Any discussion? Additions? Sounds good. Article 3, all those in favor as presented, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Article 3 carries. We're doing good. Okay, Article 4, to see if the village will vote to collect the village general taxes on real estate and all other taxes levied through the treasurer under the provisions of Title 32 VSA Chapter 133 and to fix the date of payments as November 3rd, 2023 and May 3rd, 2023 and to require payment to be received by the town office by close of business day on those dates. Can I have a motion on Article 4? I'll make a motion so that we can discuss. Okay, Jill Davies moves. Do I have a second? Seaton McElroy seconds. Seaton McElroy seconds. Okay, Article 4, open for discussion or questions? Yes. Yes. Ah, thank you. Can that be a friendly amendment? <laughs> We'll change that to 2024. Any other questions or no? Okay. So, I, I, I think, well, I guess officially, go ahead. Steve Barrow made that motion to amend. Second. Second by Jeff Todd. Okay. So now we can ask for a vote to pass Article 4 as amended so that it will read the second date as 2024. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you very much for catching that. Okay. Got somebody on the Zoom. Article 5, to see if the village will vote to authorize the treasurer with the approval of the Board of Trustees to borrow money, if necessary, in anticipation of taxes for fiscal year 2023-2024 to defray current expenses and debt of the village. I have a motion on Article 5 is presented. Carol, can you make a motion? Okay, Carol got the motion, making sure Don's with us. Second? Anyone? Jill Davis. Thank you, Jill. Jill Davis seconds. Any discussion, questions, or corrections needed on Article 5? All those in favor, as presented, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Article 5 carries as presented. Thank you. All right. Now we get into the more discussion. Here we see. Article 6, to see if the village will vote to appropriate the sum of, get it right, $1,463,235.28 and raise by taxation the sum of, $630,841.70. Do 
65 cents to pay the current expenses and debt of the village. General government, $284,084.79. Boards and agencies, $109,440. Village highway, 49,000. Village parks, 2,700. Village police, $1,003,010.49. Trustees contingency of $15,000 and the total being $1,463,235.28. Could I have a motion on Article 6 as presented? Stephen McElroy, make a motion to consider the article. Consider the article and seconded? Second. Seconded by Jeff Kahn. At this time, I know there, there may be questions or discussions, but as tradition would be, I'll turn it over to the chair, to Seton, um, for discussions of different sections of the budget. Sure. Um, thank you, Greg. So this evening we're um, doing something a little bit different. Um, I'm going to start by giving you a little bit of a, some facts about the budget, how we came to it, what the process was, um, and uh, then Bill's going to go over a, a little bit more detail of it. And then for each section, um, we're going to have the department head who's in charge of it uh, give you an overview and what it is, and then we'll go into discussion. So we'll give you all the information first, and then. If, if it's okay with Greg, because he's moderating Absolutely. Uh, discussion then. Um, so this budget was put together um, with a lot of different people um, by Woodstock department heads, the finance director, the interim municipal manager with input from our publicly appointed financial committee. Um, we had um, three public meetings uh, of the trustees on November 9th, excuse me, for November 9th, November 22nd, December So I guys lost my audio. I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh yeah, I can hear you now. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, I think it's interference from you, Bill. We can't hear the trustees. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, uh, Bill, can you mute um, until you're ready to talk? Yes, I will mute until I'm ready to talk. Let me know when. Um, so it's about a 5.6% increase over last year's budget. The majority of that was, um, as you know, inflation happened. Um, and so a lot of this was the biggest chunk uh, came from healthcare costs. Um, and then the cost of sort of normal things that we buy, fuel was also a huge um, piece that increased as well. Um, this works out to about $10.65 more per $100,000 of home value. So take $10.65, $10.65, multiply that by uh, whatever $100,000 component is in your home, and that's the increase over last year. I'm going to turn it over to our friend Bill, who uh, is managing lots of things right now and has nice hey to pull over, and he's going to give us a little more uh, detail. Yeah, the good news is I'm heading back. I might even get there before the meeting's over. Hardy are. Um, yeah, so, gang, I don't know how many are listening. I'm trying to be as clear as I can. Can you hear me okay? I hope you can. Um, yes. There's, you know, the, the breakout of the different parts of the, of the increase. You know, there's there's half a dozen or more of them, and I thought I'd just run them off to give you an idea of what's going on. Um, the large percent of the overall 70, so 75, 9, 6, 3,000 is the increase from last year. Um, about 46 or so percent that comes from um, salary increases. It's basically just a 3% raise or so that's given. It's commensurate with the private sector. This is what people tend to get in a regular, you know, non a private sector business, that kind of thing. So that's fairly normal, I think. Um, the contingency, uh, the trustee contingency is kind of it's new to the budget. I think it's backup for what we may need. And for budgets that are not uh, clean, it might go over a little bit. It's about 1% of the total budget. And I think that's I think that's a pretty reasonable thing to be putting into our needs for the town. Um, planning zoning had a slight increase, about 11% of the total and with offset by some salary line increases, mostly because we're moving from the town, um, uh, they're being paid by the town instead of the village. So that's a piece there. 
Um, fuel costs for police, I mean, it's no surprise, gas costs are going up, so we're budgeting higher for that. It's only about 4% of the total increase though, so it's not a huge amount. And a couple of the smaller things too, um, the parks. Uh, we're trying to dip in a little bit now to take care of Easton Park. I think you all really enjoy that. I know the Pentangle concerts there are very popular in the summer. And also uh, some allowance for treating the uh, ash trees that are being affected by emerald ash borer infections. So that's a little bit of a variance there too. So professional services, we need to bump up a little bit to get proper accountants for um, audits and stuff like that. And there's a very small increase for auditing too. And the main reason for there is that we, we need to kind of uh, come up with fees for orders that are commensurate with the private sector. Because we don't, we won't get the proper orders we need that are required by the, by the laws and so forth to, to do the proper auditing. So that's pretty much the story there. Um, we get a slight increase in parking meeting oper operating expenses. And that's basically to cover line up with what we've spent in the last uh, the last year or two. It was a little bit under, so that was a small adjustment. And then the police has some communications equipment they need to buy, and that's a lot of detail. It's going way down in the weeds more than you probably need to know. But um, the town has, um, the, I mean, the village has put up some pretty good balance of numbers here. I think you saw the the request is a million four six four five three five. I think it's the total that we need this year, and um, I'd be happy to answer questions if anybody has any on these details. I can stay very much down the weeds, but um, hopefully that will solve any curious questions you might have. Thanks, Bill. And uh, I, hope so, I hope you can hear me. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so next to give sort of an overview, and I'm just going to go in terms of where things are listed on the budget. I'm going to turn it over to Stephen, talk a little bit about the planning and zoning budget and why that's a little different this year. Hi everyone, for the record, uh, Stephen Bauer, Director of Planning and Zoning. Um, thank you, Stephen. Trustees, great. Um, so if you if you look at the line by line um, from what Bill was saying is, is really going through, not only we tried to keep this as low as, as we possibly could, uh, if you actually look in comparison, um, going back to actual fiscal year 20, the last time that the planning and zoning department was was fully staffed, um, we're we're about half of what it once was, and so a lot of that, the biggest change comes from shifting. Um, in my experience, through the first eight months here, was was shifting some of the expense that the village was taking on, and it was a lot of town. Just so everybody else, here. you're not here. Um, the mineral, um, many pages of uh, line items. Yeah, but it looks like actually for 2020, we've got an actual. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it must have been a misprint of why it wasn't there. Um, but I have FY21 in front of me, so I can answer any questions you have. I'll ask FY21 if you want. Well, I don't understand what's printed in the back of the So it's, 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 it's FY20. It's FY20. So this is correct that it shows FY20 expenses and revenue. So 2021 was just given? Yeah, it was not included by mistake on the. Okay, and are we looking at budget fiscal year 23 or budget fiscal year 24? 24. 24. 24. Um, and then if, when you were addressing uh, page one, flexibility. Okay. Um, so I, I'm actually starting with the expense lines uh, for the board and agencies, starting on page 24. So I'll, I'll kind of I'll kind of go back a little bit. Um, so going back to actual FY20, um, where you see salary wages, we have a total of of over 160,000. Um, we have cut away at that 
over time. Um, and then we compare that also with actual FY22, where we had um, nobody for the final quarter. Uh, we, had, we had no salary or wages to pay because no one was in the office. Um, and so that's where you see actually some of those professional services, which was me as intern, um, to close FY22. Um, so overall, figuring out the, the two big things for expenses for FY24 is one, uh, restructure the way that we are, we are actually charging the village. Um, about 60% of our time in the department is spent on reviewing town applications, working with, with town citizens. Um, even though the village, the village just has a, a significant amount less of the total, the total time that it takes. Um, so we propose and both boards agreed to do a 60, 40 split on the expenses. Um, so that goes across the board as well as, as, as we go down for professional services where you see something like fiscal year 22 uh, was really high because that was actually me serving as interim from two rivers. Uh, whereas more realistically, you know, we, that, that figure is high. Um, so we reduce that down to, to 2,800 uh, legal fees about the same. Um, the equipment fees, if you can see going back, we've deferred um, any sort of new equipment. So at, at minimum, we put 800 in there. Uh, travel and transportation, again, has been deferred for many years. Um, due subs and meetings. Uh, that increase comes mainly from the fact that the village has not historically paid uh, anything for the services of Two Rivers Atacuichi Regional Commission. Um, so we kind of balance out where the town pays a little bit more, but we, we felt that the village should, should pay their fair share because they use roughly about 40 to 50% of, of, the, of the regional commission's time. Um, and advertising stays about the same. GIS is something that any planning, planning and zoning office should have. Um, so we put some money towards that. And overall, that, that brings us to, compared to, to fiscal year 2030, actually a decrease. Um, and then if we go back to page 18, you'll see right in the middle talking about revenue. Um, in my opinion, we, we have not we have not pressed that issue at all. We've stuck at around 10,000, and I really think that that more revenue could be generated. And the benefit is not only saving on the expenses part of it. If we are able to gener generate more revenue, more development, then that is less that we have to go to the taxpayers to ask for. Thank you, Stephen. Okay. Yeah, revenue is from uh, zoning fee applications. Robbie, you want to talk about the police? Mm -hmm. you, you sit there and sort of yeah. that way people there can see you and people there can see. You. Absolutely. All right. All right. So my my budget is, as everyone knows, the lion's share of the village budget. Mm -hmm. um, as Bill alluded to, the majority of the increases in the police budget were attributed to uh, uh, wages and salaries, as well as uh, benefits, the increase in benefits. When you look at it from a line by line perspective, not a lot of increases anywhere, some decreases in other spots, so it's pretty level funded. Uh, revenues were steady, um, and some of them we had a little bit higher than the year before, so they, they've gone up. Um, so that's, as a whole, the police budget. If anybody has specific questions about a specific line item, happy to answer it. Please, Caffrey, and about whether any of your officers are certified to stop here for us to come. The reason I ask is, anyone who lives on one of the streets in the central part of the village, Knows 
corner of the house. And I said to him, if you really want to increase the revenue of this town, you can come down and sit in front of my house at 7 o'clock in the morning or 5 o'clock at night and catch people going 45 miles an hour. He said, five to stop anyone who sees it. And I said, ask him why he was sitting there. And he said, to stop to catch people who are using their cell phone. Now, I recognize that using a cell phone while driving is not only illegal, but very dangerous. But to have this level of spending in a town that's as congested and full of tourists as it is, to not have being stopped. I see trailer catchers occasionally being stopped. But what happens is they get past that checkpoint because they have to go slowly because there are people. And then with the terrific two lanes that put and put down uh, along the side of the train, they drag race. And I'm talking about in the morning and in the evening, a lot of those people have Vermont place. They are not out of town. So I'd like to know, you know, what you're doing, what the police are doing, increasing the the enforcement. Sure. So actually, I just wanted to break in. Yeah, I'm, we were going to hold questions till the end. Yeah, I. But I know, well, but I. There is time at the end to bring up other discussions. This is strictly budget things, but at the end we can. There is. Uh, at the, at it does relate to the police budget and whether there's any training for the certification that this officer said he needed that they didn't have in order to, you know, enforce the laws that are on the book. And if we're paying million dollars, they're not paying a million dollars for police. Then why is it? I can really answer this real quick. So first of all, almost all of the officers, except for that one officer, are certified to run Raider. That one particular officer, I know who you're speaking to, uh, he has not been certified to run Raider because there hasn't been a training class available. Uh, there was one available that was then canceled. So he's the only one that's not certified uh, to run Raider. Uh, in terms of the speeding in the village, um, you know, we've written over in 2022 anyways, we wrote over a thousand traffic tickets. Many of those were for speeding. Uh, we've done, we have the radar speed signs out. I pull those speed reports, uh, give them the seating on occasion. The, uh, the average speed is below 25. I don't contest the fact that there's probably some folks that are going over uh, 25 up and down. Uh, the streets in Woodstock, but when we're running radars, particularly direct patrol on Central Street, on Church Street, uh, the officers are not seeing the egregious speeds uh, that you're referring to. You're giving me exact speeds. I'm not sure. Maybe you have your own radar gun, but our radar guns are telling us that they're not speeding at the speed that you say they are. So the officers are out there doing their job. Um, we don't have the crash data that indicates that there's uh, these excessive speeds as well, because that usually will, will indicate the uh, a higher crash rate when in fact we don't have a higher crash rate. But and for any other budget questions, um, as it pertains to the police budget. Can I, uh, that's up to the chair. I, I pulled the numbers in 2022. I have 1,035 tickets. I'm sorry. I take it back. Tra traffic stops, but the majority of those were traffic tickets. Okay. Uh, okay, but I'm talking about overall. Are there other budget 
for re we're going to continue with a review and then go back to questions, right? Is there anything else, Robbie, with your budget to uh, present? I don't have anything else unless there's other budgetary questions. Okay. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to add something um, about the budget specifically. Um, so just to give you an idea of, because when you look at the numbers, remember in Woodstock, because we have a separate village in a separate town, um, we, the, the trustees are manage the, the, the police, but then we sort of um, rent them out to the town. So there's a certain amount of their time goes to the town. So their budget is actually split between the town and the village. So while their total budget is $1,003,000, the town pays $446,000. And so that is town that is paid for by the town. And so that is town use. And then uh, the village uh, spends $296,000. And then the police through their revenue of various tickets and parking and, and other things, they bring in about $260,000. So their revenue, they bring in uh, just a little bit less than what the village is paying in taxes. And then of course the town pays another $446,000. And looking at uh, across the, uh, what I'm done, well, Greg can moderate that. Um, looking across the state, the average increase in police budgets across the state of Vermont was 7% this year. Um, we were fortunate that we were able to keep it at 5%, so we are lower than the rest of the state um, on average. Um, and uh, about 67%, as, as we talked about in other things, about 67% of uh, the budget went to wages and benefits, which is, again, keeping sort of on track with, uh, you know, raises in health care and cost of living and those sorts of things. Question about what she was saying? Yeah. So it seems to me we're told all the time that I complain about anyone getting killed by a car, and one of those speed um, things were put out, and um, it was never turned off. Um, this car was totaled by a speeder in a car. So it just seems to me that I know you tell, you tell us there's no speeding, you feel like we're being gaslit, but it really is an opportunity to raise some money. If the money for the, the police comes a lot from tickets, there's speeding going on. And we're missing an opportunity to raise the to raise the to, to, to raise some of this money. Okay. Now I know we get told all the time there's no speeding. Okay. Uh, Point. Thank you for your comment. Okay. Well, can we wait? Do you have, a, do you have specific can budget? We, we're talking about the budget right okay. now. Do you have specific we, budget questions? If, if, what are your recommendations? Do you have specific budget areas? Oh, wait a minute. She's talking the whole budget? Just. Are you. Uh, is, can you clarify that as an amendment or a motion to the? Is there a second? And, and can you state your name for the clerk? Thank you. Is there a second? Okay. Then we'll move, move forward. Thank you for your comments, but yeah, we'll move forward with no second to the original motion of going over the entire budget. Is there someone coming up after Robbie? For uh, yes, uh, Eric is coming back. Oh, yeah, there we go. Perfect. Thank Eric's you. coming back in. He's going to talk a little bit. Um, so Eric, full disclosure, obviously was not here when the budget got put together. Um, that was put together by uh, interim town, our former interim town manager, Tom Yenerell. Um, But he's going to give a, just sort of a little overview um, again of, of, of what's happening in there. Eric? Sorry, what's the question? I missed uh, uh, the, the, the overview the, that you were planning on talking about. Uh, for the budget? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so as mostly touched upon um, a little earlier about from um, Bill himself, um, but just that the budget itself is basically come down to salary and benefits. Um, on the salary, almost all the salaries are union contracts that have been negotiated with the union that are legally binding. Uh, that the village is uh, required to pay due to the agreements that have been voted on by the union members of uh, uh, trustees at a meeting, public meeting at some point throughout the year. With those salaries, also the benefits increase. 
particular town is required to pay based on the personnel policy and the union agreements that again have been signed um, in these meetings. Um, <clears throat> beyond that, the increases we're looking at are really $2,000 for fuel, legal, legal fees, um, communication. So again, 66% of the budget you're looking at benefits and salary and the contingency plan, which is a 1% um, of the entire budget, which is really just giving the village some extra time, extra money in case at the end of the year there were overspent or anything, that $15,000 would come in handy to kind of cover higher inflation or anything else. Anyone else? Yeah. Yeah. Further questions on this article on the budget as presented? On page, page 21. Can you give us your name? Just okay. asking is every other department experiencing the same increase in uh, health care increases are across the board and if you look in uh, in each section so if you look in the executive session the office of administration section um the planning and zoning section each one of those uh talks about there is a line there about in, employer paid benefits and so all of those numbers are there oh, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, salaries and wages. Yeah. Well, oh, the, oh, the other compared thing, to the wages, not the increase. Oh, uh, the other thing to remember about benefits is that benefits are different. It, for each individual. So if there's somebody that's single and they have benefits in a department, then they're just paying theirs. But if you are somebody that has benefits that it, uh, you've got a family of five and all five of them are in your insurance plan, then then we are paying more for that. So that's why it varies from, from place to place. Oh. Yeah, so an employee might have one person on a plan, might have six people on a plan. I'm sorry. That's okay. I want to applaud a raise in the budget, which is the raise on parks. One of our delights, and, and it's lovely to see the parks getting a little more support. I, 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 I applaud you and your willingness to spend full in that time. Pay attention, though, uh, Oliver, because we, we plan on putting more energy into the parks beyond the money. Thank you for notice. Other questions or comments on Article 6? Okay, with no amendments, I will take a vote on Article 6 as presented, which is uh, the budget. All those in favor as presented signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm want to post, but the motion carries. Um, I'm just going to go back. Oh, I'm sorry. Didn't hear her speak up. Two nays. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to go back because we have the results um, from Article 1, which was a written ballot, which is um, 16 ayes and two noes. So Article 1, as presented, does carry, which means we won't be electing auditors. Okay. Um, Article 7 to see if the village will vote to raise and appropriate from taxes the sum of $3,000 for the purpose of village beautification projects and seasonal decorations. This money is to be spent at the discretion of the Board of Trustees. I take a motion on Article 7. 
I make a motion to board Goodenow. Board Goodenow. And a second? Chris Miller. Chris Miller. Any comments, questions? Yes. Yes. Joe Why is this special optical loving in the bus? Being a special optical <laughs> many rooms. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I'm trying to remember. There used there was a reason for that, but it has been so many years prior to my being moderator. I don't know, as I know the answer to that question. The board gave the answer. <laughs> uh, so, do you mind if we just change to the position next year and take it into the budget? Well, we can take that under advisement. Yeah. And yeah. Is that? You suggested Paper something advisement. I had previously, which we did change, I, as I recall. I forget what it was. The trees? Was the tree? The we trees, put, yes, yeah. We put we, something we, in you the budget it. that was previously a special article. It used to be every year, and they folded that in after a suggestion. So yeah. I assume I the board will take that up. My guess could be the phrase, spend the discretion of the Board of Trustees, if it's in the budget, who's making the decision to pay for it if there's no one overseeing that budget. So there probably has to be discussion of who would oversee that money in the operating budget, where now I assume someone comes in front of the trustees with the purchase of you ask for funds. Yeah. No. The trustees have been overseeing those funds. Yes, yeah, so, I mean some right now someone comes to the trustees and presents the funds, but it goes into the operating budget. Who's overseeing it to, to, to spend it each day is one is all I'm saying. I believe we just treat it as an article. Yeah, that's why it's an article, yeah. 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 But, but uh, future uh, reference, yes. Happy, yeah. Happy to have a conversation. Yes. Happy to have a conversation. Yes. Um, these are so the Halloween, some of it is Halloween candy that we pass out um, on high and maple and golf. Um, the other thing that we've used it for is there have been some Christmas decorations that we've purchased with it. Um, what else did we purchase? All of that. Flower baskets. Flower baskets right? Yeah. We contributed towards them. The flower baskets that go on the lampposts. Correct. Anyone else? Okay. I would entertain a vote on Article 7 as presented. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The article carries. Article 8, to see if the village will vote to appropriate the sum of $400 for the purpose of paying the trustee of public funds for services rendered and approve such expenditures from income, uh, excuse me, of the trust funds. Anyone move Article 8 as presented? I'll move Oliver, yeah. Oliver Goodna. Second. Second. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Yeah, you guy was pointing right at you. That macro, okay. Questions? Oh, yes. Oh, thank you. And I'd like to propose that this amendment, or I'd like to propose that we don't vote for this article. My duties are to write six checks. Two of those, one of those is for my own dollars. One is for the auditor fee, which I'm also going to get to draw. So, and we've also closed one fund. So next year, my duties are to write three checks to make sure that those checks are shown in the account and to move any money that we need from that regard. It takes me a couple of hours over the course of the year. Compared to what the trustee gives us $750 a year, I think this is out of order. Well, we don't always have a Jill Davis who's going to be that, ge that generous. Yeah. I would second her. Well, she was proposing that people vote this down. I don't think she was proposing an amendment. Yeah, she was. A So the real reason for proposing this is to make life simple. 
really some of the first things that we do with the fan net. And a $20 check is going to cost the same because it has to be entered into the bookkeeping. You have to write in a column of nine, it's the day. Any cap raise, how much money are you holding? $90,000. So my only comment on that is just, I think Jeffrey said earlier, is what happens in five, 10 years, if you're no longer doing this and we want to encourage someone to come aboard and help the village out, if there's no fee associated where we have volunteer step up is my only concern. Can I ask you, could you so, $400 for like six checks? No decision making by myself to do that with the and then get down you think this went outside office? No. No. This is the article before that. Yeah. Article uh, 8. Yeah. Chris. Uh, the other thing is you can always vote it back in as an article. Right. That's what I was going to yes, say uh, that in a second. But first, I uh, think Chris Miller. Please state it. Uh, recognizing Chris Miller. Correct. No. Well, actually, I think. There's, yeah, there's uh, been, or we can reinstate the payment in a future circumstance. Correct. So I think going with Ward's comments, if I'm reading it right, nobody seconded a couple of amendments that were floating. Right. That's what I mean. No, there were, your father made one, but he made it in jest. So um, I believe what Jill is suggesting is that at least for tonight's meeting or this year, she's suggesting that you vote no on this article. It does not mean the article cannot come back up next year. It does not eliminate any position. It would eliminate the $400 being paid to that position this year. Is that, do I understand that correctly? That's your presentation argument, whatever. Again, okay. Further discussion on article eight as presented. So uh, just to be clear, to support what Jill had to say, we would vote no on article eight. That is, yeah, that is correct. So. If you're supporting Jill's feelings on this, we would vote no, but it would not subject us to not bring this up in the future when someone else might be overseeing said funds. We, we're not breaking any laws no, overseeing good. funds. Okay. Well, I meant overseeing the funds. There's somebody, she still oversees them. She's just not going to take the $400. Okay. We'll bring it to a vote. Again, voting no would eliminate it just for this year, the funds being paid to said person that would be doing that job. So article eight, all those in favor of the article is presented signify by saying aye. Aye. Ooh, one. All those who oppose the, the article signify by saying nay. Nay. And I think the nays have got it. Good presentation. <laughs> Thank you, Jill. Yeah, all right. Thank you for your service. And we'll probably get article nine to see if the village will vote to appropriate the sum of $400 for the purpose of auditing the public trust funds and approve such expenditures from the income of the trust funds. Do I have a motion on Article 9? See, not the word. Make a motion. Second. Anybody? Second. Jeff Kahn. Got it. And discussion. <laughs> May we call on Jill Davies for discussion? Oh, she's given up the 400 again. Praise in my argument to last thing. In the interest of simplifying the accounting, the bookkeeping, the auditing that is done, I suggest that the fee of four hundred dollars that you don't approve this article, and that this audit fee is paid in the general budget, so that the separate line item gets rid of it, get rid of the separate line item. It's not necessary. The, the village don't keep that anyway, um, and it just causes more bookkeeping. The audit is very simple. All the auditors do is have twelve mental over accounts, twelve Vanguard um, accounts, and six sets that I write, which will now increase to four if you because you wrote an over. Which is already covered in the auditing fee we're paying, is it? Or not quite? No, this is just the common. This is the contribution to that. Right. So same premise. You're suggesting that the, 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 the folks here this evening vote no to this article for those reasons. Any other discussion, Oliver? We didn't vote no on the other, but not on this. Oh. Uh, we did not vote no on this. A, the audit is important. 
it is very important to have an outside audience look at things like uh, I'm not everybody is transparent on us to do it. Uh, and I think it's a good idea that public funds to find it. And the key thing, uh, I can't do on the on the all that this, but it, it, uh, 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 this as one of the things that happens to the trust, and one of the things that the trust pays for this for four hundred dollars is, is 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 a very minor expense for a lot of people. And I would I would argue that that, that it's money money well spent in this country. Chill. So you're not, I'm not suggesting that the funds are not audited. They have to be audited by law. I'm suggesting that we don't make it a separate expense and it just gets wrapped up and we simplify our work going forward. Uh, I don't think we can actually do it for this issue. Well, we'd be four hundred dollars short on the budget, yeah. technically. Yeah. See, we have to do it for next year. So maybe what I'm suggesting is going forward, it's wrapped. Yeah. So we'd still vote this. Yeah. I would vote to approve. That's what. Yeah. That's what. So. And we can see it in the budget and have it. So we're amending your suggestion unofficially, so that the trustees can discuss that um, for next year. But perhaps we should now be suggested. That we vote this through, in your opinion, now. Okay. Any other discussion on Article 9? So, all those in favor of Article 9 as presented for this year, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries as, the article carries as presented. Thank you for all that discussion and all the work you do, Jill. We appreciate it very much. Article 10 is to act on other business that may legally come before the village meeting. So that would require a motion to discuss anything in particular to come before the meeting tonight. Um, yeah, I mean, do you have a particular motion or is it just a, a go ahead. We'll see if we form it into a motion or not. Well, I just might. Okay. Yeah. No. Nope. No, nope, that's okay. If it leads to a motion, that's okay. Um, okay. That's a general comment and for discussion and for the board to look at later and not a motion because we can't do that without warning and so forth. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Any other general discussion items? Taken something that's come up in years and years in the past, the division. Yeah. Or yeah, could not. I would just add um, that I think I know there was some discussion of it at the town meeting. I think it's kind of something that hopefully is seen for both <laughs> by the government for either this year or next year, ideally this year. Um, I know there will be some uh, groundwork being done for the ballot next year, but. Um, there are about 18 or 20 village 
residents who were able to were voting here today. Um, while certainly we voted on bigger budgets with fewer people, um, I think the general confusion and, and fog of participation that arises from having multiple bodies uh, overseeing different aspects of municipal life um, is one that diminishes uh, a lot of the conversation that takes place around this topic. And while I understand there are arguments that maybe we can raise more money. I think the idea of subdividing Route 4 into multiple different municipal districts just for that purpose is not necessarily uh, worth the additional possible grant money we have to And so I would, uh, we've tried it before, we've come close before. Um, and I think now is really an opportunity uh, for us to keep looking at this and playing back on the ballot. Go ahead, Mark. Uh, amen to everything he said. My question about Anderson um, is it possible for you to um, form a citizen first committee um, meeting? This is an urgent, or urgent issue for people. Um, this is an important meeting all the time where some of us will be killed and hopefully be killed. It's part of the trouble. This is actually an issue, and we would like to see if there's something that we could do about it. Yeah, I think that's something that uh, we want to do with the input of of the police chief and get some advice from him about and and have a broader discussion at a trustees meeting about how to do that. Um, and you know, first, you know, start by finding the problem. You know, the whole process of. We can't find the problem because there's no there's no radar on like Central Avenue. Right? You use Central Avenue, you send the block tonight. So like you said, seven o'clock in the morning. You know, when people, you know, if you learn to get when you're going 10 miles an hour, but you get hit by a car at going 25 miles an hour, you get a chance to um, survive. If you get hit by a car at 35 miles an hour, it's full of story. You're not going to see people, not going to see the tickets for going 35 miles an hour. That's not because there's a speeding, because it's only 10 miles above the speed limit. So, and that's important to the data that I have. So, you know, you're saying it with a speeding because people don't have to buy in 25 miles of speed. I'm happy to have this discussion if there's a uh, community wants to have that conversation and yeah. put that together. I think this is more fun conversation because there's a lot of emails that have promises and that there's, you know, speed cameras or speed signs out, you know, without the class trying to find the death zone and it never turned on. You know, can we have something a little bit more formal? Yeah, let's talk about it because this we're finishing up here. We are having a trustees meeting immediately after this. We have a reorganization meeting. That would probably be a better time to bring that up and have more of a discussion about it. Yeah. Yeah, they, they reform. They'll have a short meeting of trust, a trustee meeting. And I was going to say that and community involvement uh, ward and the others talking about, you know, the, the divide between village and town governments, not but you know, combining or dividing them. Yeah, exactly. Um, um, from a fiscal standpoint, my father at 84 still remembers probably the 50th time they talked about it. So it, it's been around for a long time and come so close to being merged so many times. Reasons to go both ways. Um, but that and the police discussion would be things to be involved with the boards to get them both talking because police involves both boards as well. And so would anything to do with the merger. So I would suggest those discussions would take place at those meetings as opposed to specific the articles that were basically done with. That cover everybody. I would take a motion to adjourn this village. Second. Could we get a second? Second. Thank you. You got him. Okay. All those in favor of adjournment, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you for your participation. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. One more meeting. One more meeting. I forget you do that right afterwards. Oh, Sorry. Thank you. Smart, but brutal. Here and there.
Bill, Bill, so glad you be, did you go all the way down to Philly and back up? Yeah. Oh, nice to meet you. Or just okay. I'm here for I know you're uh, welcome. Uh, Dave, Dave, so nice to meet you. Uh, Thank you, Ward. Thank you, guys. Oh, you're welcome. Right. Uh, uh, you know what? It's, uh, well, I thought. Picky wicked. Yeah. Okay. We're all friends. You all roll with it. Yeah. meeting? So thank you. Uh, so I'd like to call to order this uh, meeting of the Village Board of Trustees um, at 8.52 on March 21st. Uh, this special meeting of the Village Trustees is to uh, reorganize for the next year now that our elections are the, and the trustees meeting. The Village meeting is over. <laughs> um, are there uh, any citizen comments? All left. They've all left. Everybody went to bed. Um, the next item on the agenda is restructuring of the board. Um, the So what we need to do to restructure the board is to nominate and vote for a chair and a vice chair. Are there any nominees for the chair? Uh, I, I, <laughs> I second it. I <laughs> so excited. Nope. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Uh, now we'll take a nomination for vice chair. I would nominate Jeffrey Kahn to be vice chair. Second. Second. Yep. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations, Mr. Thank Kahn. Thank you. Congratulations, Mr. Thank McElroy. You. How many years have you served in this? I forget. 50. <laughs> Uh, so then the next item on our agenda is to name the newspapers of record. The uh, Vermont Standards yes, first sir. and then the, the Valley News second. Okay. Is that a motion? That's a motion. Second. Yeah. Second. Second. All in favor of making the Vermont Standard and the Valley News our records, our newspapers of record, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, next item on the agenda is municipal appointments. Um, we need to remove administrative officer uh, because we need to wait for the planning commission to nominate the administrative officer, and then we will uh, approve that. So we're going to move on to the development review board. Um, we have two open positions on the development review board, uh, Carrie Cole and Mary Ann Flynn. Um, so uh, Carrie Cole is not able to be here this evening, but she is interested in uh, remaining on the Development Review Board. Um, I do not know about Marianne. Well, I'll move that we accept Carrie Cole to be on the Development Review Board. Second. 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 Oh. Marianne. Marianne. Reed. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I'd make a motion for both Carrie Cole and Marianne Flynn to be reinstated. Is there a second? Second. 
Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Um, next is the Planning Commission, Brad Lawrence and Susan Silberg. They were reappointed last week by the Select Board. I move that we we uh, uh, appoint Brad Lawrence and Susan Silberberg to the Planning Commission. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Brenda seconds. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next is there is one seat up for the Design Review Board. That's Phil Newberg. I have not heard from him. So is Phil Philip giving up his his Historic Preservation Commission role then? I don't see him on here. I don't know. I, I guess he's not currently on it. Okay. Thank you, Jane. Okay. I I move. I don't know that he has accepted the nomination. Okay. We can hold off and. Okay. Oh, do you know? Uh, yes, please. Uh, so I, I did reach out to Philip. I gave him a deadline of yesterday, so I could relay to you whether or not he. I did not hear. Okay. Uh, so I would. We'll if open. you if you left it vacant and I hear differently, then I think you speak up before the trustees at our uh, April meeting. Okay. Okay. Otherwise, if I hear that you no longer want to do it, then I can come back before you with the with the task. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Um. Next is the finance committee. We have um a vacancy for a three year spot. Um, which Nikki has already posted and um, has a deadline for people uh, responding to that to be uh, to be nominated. So once that comes in, we'll take care of that. Uh, the select board and the trustees. Um, the other two open spots are the seats held by John Spector and Jonathan Wilson. I have heard from John Spector that he wants to remain on the finance committee. I reached out to Jonathan Wilson and did not get a response. I move that we. Except John Spector for a three year term on the finance committee. Okay. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. And will uh, you continue to reach out to Yeah, John I'll follow Wilson up with Jonathan now. Wilson. Um, the next appointments are for the Conservation Commission. There are two four year terms. Open one is currently um, held by Al Alessi. The second one is a vacancy where no one is currently serving. I do not know if Al Alessi wants to keep his seat. Does anybody? Yes. He does. He okay. Does, yeah. Do you know if there's anybody else that's interested? Uh, there is. We have an applicant. And okay. We'll okay. So I move Al Alessi for the term on the conservation okay. commission. Brenda seconds. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, Al Lessie. It's been voted back through. Uh, is there any other business to come before the trustees this evening? I have a oh, Lord. The trustees have signed off on um, the highway mileage for the village. Okay. Uh, it's a yearly thing, just saying that it didn't change over the last year. Okay. Do we all need to sign or just one? Uh, it's just uh, it'll be for three of you. Okay. Four? Three. Five? At least three. Oh, at least three of us. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Oh, we can all sign. Okay. Yeah, there's a bar man. Yeah, yeah. Which is John Cat. Oh, isn't it? Action. Wait a second. I have to walk. I'd uh, I'd like to make one comment. Uh, under other business. Under other business. Uh, um, I have great faith in our police department, um, and working with them, and and that them doing what we feel they need, and and us believing in what they say. And I would not be in favor of a citizens group with any sort of power outside of the powers of the trust the board of trustees to uh, monitor speeding thank you for your comment Jeff. yep i agree i have a comment yes sir and i know jeffrey would disagree with me frankly but first thing i noticed when i came to town here working as a trustee i wanted to sign warrants as you all know i serve on behalf of the entire trustee board they can hear me up there um I believe this town needs one government, and I think it's just absolutely no offense. I know it's just ludicrous to say that we have to have everybody divide little checks into, oh, 
it's got to be one for the town and two for the village and three for the flood department. So it's like, it's so much work. And every time I look at a bill and say, oh, that's going to be, you know, down to pennies, dollar this. And it's just, I can't imagine the amount of time that Zoe and all the team here, Eric and everybody have to take to, to, to administer two governments in one little place. And maybe it's because I'm from New Jersey and I don't know this, I, but it, to me, it just seems so inappropriate, inconvenient, and whatever other N word I can think of to say. Um, I think that it's time that that be revisited in the town again. And I think well, there's enough people like in town. Well, it's gotta be revisited. Yeah. I, I just have to keep saying the other side because um, even though I totally understand what you're saying, and in certain circumstances, I would agree with it. For so many years, I mean, the village of Woodstock has existed as its own municipality since 1836. Um, and then for different reasons that were more powerful back then. But nevertheless, uh, I will always remember what uh, Phil Swanson, our longest serving town manager, always told me. He took advantage, municipal manager, took advantage of those two municipalities for so many different grants that otherwise he felt would not, we would not have been entitled to. Um, and another example besides those grants, well, I guess it is a grant. We just got $260,000 from ARPA funds that because we were our own municipality. Now, those big ones, we got a grant in the hundreds of thousands in Phil's last year to improve North Street and the problems on it. Um, those, those amounts, if we can continue to get those amounts, Things at that level, there's a there's it, it dwarfs the extra effort and expense that that it takes to administer the difference. Too many people do this unconsciously uh, to make and, them do that kind of detail. Uh, sorry, you interrupted me. I'm sorry. So, I think there's two sides, and people really need to understand it. Once it's gone, it's gone. There's even even social issues. You know, your your house might currently be numbered uh, 15, whatever street. And that's because we're our own municipality and we voted that in, whereas the town voted in going to the 9-11 system, which would change all that. And the historic numbers in this village would go away. Um, so there's multiple reasons to think carefully about it before just saying it's, oh, just get rid of it. That's all I'm saying. My last comment would be, we need to study it, see about grants and have an evaluation of how much time it spends so many people in this building over and over and hours and hours that it takes and what we pay them. So I think a study needs to be done. I think Jeffrey's right. It's something that should be brought up again and it should be discussed. That's okay. yeah, I, and, and I, I agree with you, Bill, but uh, it has to, it, it has, you have to have the data. I, I, I wouldn't be able to vote on it yeah. without any data I, that, I, that tells me that one versus the other is better. So I would I would need to see I would need to see the data. Yeah, and I don't disagree with that either. If we can collect. No, no, no. I agree. It needs to be looked at, but I yeah. I think you ha you have to show me the data. Yeah, well, so that I could it's a make project a, to, an informed decision. I also think that um, once a little bit more time has been spent, our town manager probably would be able to <laughs> don't do this. Would, 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 be, would be better able to give us a personal opinion on this well, as to how much work. Well, until money. this has changed, he's not our town manager. <laughs> <laughs> so please. But, you, you have to take a look at everything and, and, yeah. and then be able to make an informed decision. No. Anecdotally, you know, you, you can you have pros and cons for each one. But, you know, if you can see, I'm getting this much more in grants. Okay. Uh, and anything else? I agree with everyone. Uh, and I believe that that is something that would fall under um, jointly between Eric's office and my office to uh, uh -oh. to to find an answer because that is part of planning uh, to plan forward to have a definitive answer for why we should do the other uh, and also legally so there's not only grants there's different there's different benefits uh jeff you know i think there's historic grants that that benefit but there's also uh, a modern modern style of grants 
that might fit into our 10, 20, 30 year plan that might show something different. Um, but Dave, to your point, we don't know that because we haven't ever looked at it. I have no data to to yeah. definitively right. answer yeah. uh, which one. I mean, that's, yeah. that's probably a 24 month yeah. project. Um, it's a gap, it's a gap analysis, yeah. basically. Yeah, this is, they do that, it this way, we do it this way. So what are we getting before from? Before even it? considering a potential merger, uh, the town doesn't currently have a charter. I would very much advise against just mm -hmm. having the village charter uh, and we just slap town of Woodstock on it and give it to the, the legislature. Um, I, I think this is, this is a much bigger yeah. In investigation, uh, mostly from a fiscal and a statistical um, You're right. Yeah. It is a big deal. And I think that it should be done, would be would be my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, and even though we have no time uh, to do that in the office currently, I would dedicate our part to having almost like a, a two year uh, presentation where we work closely with the board to come to a determination and uh, and an, an advisory report. I think that's that's smart, Stephen, and, and perhaps I should brought up to the select board. Yeah. And uh, together we can take a look at putting a schedule together so that we end up with the data that Gabe is talking about and, and uh, uh, you know, something firmer so that the village and town could consider it. Any other business to come before the trustees this evening? Seeing as how there is none, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh, so moved. Is there a second? Aye, second. <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you guys. Thank you all of you.